Sean Casey coming on coming to us from uh, Elon Musk's uh, Starship Four Sixty Five, and sp- you got the space background today. I like it, dude. Coming from SpaceX, dude. SpaceX. I just put this just to have some fun to mix it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm up here, yeah. So just checking, yeah. you know, doing it today. You got your Miracle League of the South Hills shirt going, and you are in space. I like it. Nice That's right. Mind you. Does it look like? Does it look like I'm, I'm like Superman? I'm flying <laughs> a little bit. It's good. <laughs> Dude, there's just a video. Oh, the, this this images came out of Christopher Reeves yeah. training for Superman. Like the Superman movies, we forget. I think he's the best Superman ever. Dude, right. Christopher Reeves was absolutely jacked, yeah. dude. Was jacked. He, was he really shredded wow. six pack in the late 70s, early 80s. Nobody did six packs in the set, late 70s, early 80s. <laughs> shredded, dude. Anyway. Wow. Um, but dude, I'm coming in. I got a lot of adrenaline, but I'm I'm on like reserve tank, dude. I had all the football stuff going last night, but last week, Jess was gonna have uh, some family over for my my actual birthday weekend. Everybody got sick, dude. They all got this cold or like flu, whatever crap's going around. And so right. we wound up doing it yesterday. So everybody was gonna come over around noon until like three, four o'clock, and then start working for for football. Obviously, the two huge games. So I think I'm all right. I'm gonna have a kind of a light day. Jess is gonna make my mom's sauce, which is unbelievable. My mom taught oh, oh. Fortune Past how to make her sweet, her sweet. It's not like a marinara. It's just this sauce. It's a special sauce. She makes oh. sauce the other night, and she was gonna make a pizza, my grandmother's pizza recipe, my dad's mom's pizza recipe, and then lasagna. And I was like, okay, you know what? That's not bad. I can have some crush a little the the, the right. type pizza. Have a nice, you know, square of the lasagna. Not so fast, my friend. My mother-in-law, Kelly, comes from Brooklyn. She went to this place called Fayeco's, bro. Fayeco's Brothers. It's, look it up. It's unbelievable. It's like the most, it's like, a, it's like a museum to like Italian cured meats and cheeses. Like, so she wrote really? semen, semolina loaves, bread, fresh oh. out of the oven. Oh. A, 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 a like 13 pound fresh matzo ball. Dried, oh. dried Italian sausage, those olives, you know, the calabata, like the olive and oil. Oh, olive. The best, yeah. Yeah. And so now I'm, I'm prosciutto, prosciutto di parma, like the Italian. In, in, now, so now I'm just crushing that. It ate probably like mm-hmm. half of a pizza and had two slices of a, a lasagna last night, dude. I'm, I'm, and you're, 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 you, you need, you need, a, you're detoxing. You're dude, detoxing I'm, a, your I'm a sodium, I'm a, a sodium explosion <laughs> waiting to happen i've just been drinking coffee and water all day what right? was the best thing to eat bro uh the pizza's always great but yesterday was like the best she's ever made it but the lasagna that like i'm a lasagna snob dude I, I went to a restaurant last week that was called lasagna and i got their right. house made you know their main lasagna doesn't even like hold a candle to my mom's and just figured out how to make my mom's lasagna so that, I gotta go with that number one. That would be like my go to the chair meal. My mom's was yeah, that'd be electrical chair. Oh, really? Yeah, dude, it's that good. Next time you're around, I'll, we'll, we'll make it for you. Wow, nice. I did, yeah, I, I want to come back, dude. That was that's so fun. Being <laughs> I know. I want you to come back. <laughs> anyway, oh, what were you gonna say? You're in space right now. No, I was gonna say, did you like having everybody over yesterday, well, knowing you had to work? You know, I actually did because it, it like got me through the, the cool things, you know, the game started at like three, three thirty Eastern. So I could hang out all early afternoon and everybody left by like three thirty four. You know, I got oh, my perfect. Yeah. So it was like yeah. it kind of kept my it would made it a long day, but it was a great day. I had yeah. fun. And Man, then, I, it, it, you know what one thing one thing that now I'm going to football now, one thing that goes to show you now the the head coach of the team matters, dude. Andy Reid. Dude. Is genius. He's it's incredible. incredible. And Spagnola, you know, on the defense. Uh, 
Forget about it. I mean, it. To, to shut down Lamar Jackson like they did, you got to be kidding me, dude. Yeah, Spagnoli is a super genius as a Giants fan too. I love that guy, and 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 yeah, it really did. It does come down that this this Chiefs team had to go through the most obstacles in this entire run that they've made. You just turned sideways, right? Uh, and I mean, it's a te- like Mahomes. My dude, there we put uh, Mahomes' numbers up next to Brady's numbers at the same time of their career. Right. It's it's like super close with almost a nod to Mahomes. Like that's how his career started. He's 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 maybe one of the greatest of all time. Like ever. How about his dad was a pitcher for like the Mets and a couple other teams. I faced him. I faced him. Oh, yeah. How'd, you, Mahomes. Do? How'd, How'd Mahomes? you do? How'd you do? I think I I think I did decent against him. Wait, hold on. I gotta pull this up. I I think I got a couple knocks off him. I'm, I'm not. I, I know I faced him. All right, we gotta find this really quick. If you guys don't mind. His name. That's when you know if you if you didn't have the technology we have, I'd be like, oh, four for four off him, two doubles. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ah, shoot, I can't find it. Well, I, whenever I type in Sean Casey, all everything thinks says is Sean Casey not returning as Yankees hitting coach. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, that's hold. old news. I know. I want to find this though because this is good stuff for the fans to know because. Mahomes' dad was like he was a stud, man. He fought his way through, had a pretty good career, and now he just parties. At, he doesn't. He won't. He like refuses to go into the Swift Suite, dude. I think he like just he like walks around the stadium. He doesn't go into the big crazy suite. Mahomes' dad. Oh, really? Yeah. Hold on. I'm gonna find this up really quick, dude. Mahomes also too was a was a, was drafted as a pitcher, right? Yes, he was apparently a very good pitcher, and, and that's like Brady. Brady was drafted as a catcher. Exactly. Who else was there? There's a lot of there's a lot of cross. Uh, remember John Dan- Elway? John Elway. John Elway was a pitcher. Uh, Boomer Sison's still considered the greatest. Uh, the greatest pitcher in Long Island history. Did you know that? What I did not know that. Dude. Yeah. Every like ten years, they put an all time Long Island team. For some reason, they forget to put my name on that list. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're on mine, James. You're on mine. Ah, this is going slow. I can't find it. Anyway, moving moving on though. The Taylor Swift saga, dude. We've been talking about this. We talk about her. She is on the field with Kelsey last night. You know, like five, six years ago, I used to be so annoyed with Taylor Swift. And every time we would watch like the Emmys or the Grammys or stuff, I'd be like, wait for this Taylor Swift cutaways. Everybody cut away Taylor Swift. Dude, the more I watch her, the more I see her carry herself. And the more I realize that she has written everything and, and performed everything on her own, I think I'm buying in. I think I'm buying dude. in. Swift. I know you already have. You have. have. Shit, she's a star, dude. She's a billionaire. <laughs> she's a self-made billionaire, dude. She writes her own music. She's yeah. an unbelievable performer. Have you ever seen her in concert? Not unbelievable, per- unbelievable performer. Dude, I don't have the pockets like you. I can't go to a Taylor Swift concert, bro. Ah, oh, dude. I you. <laughs> well, dude, not now. I went a couple years ago when I took Car- I took Carly when she was eight. She's now eighteen. So ten years ago, my first Taylor Swift concert. Uh-huh. It was incredible in Columbus, Ohio. She was awesome then. And dude, a few years ago, back in 2018, I went backstage with her. Me, Carly, Jillian, oh and Tate Moore, a friend of ours. Dude, we were the only ones backstage. She was beyond nice. I was almost scared to meet her because I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to ruin my kids' dreams if she's not nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was, Chinch, she was so nice. Beyond nice, have you, dude. Like, have you is, ever heard anything about her that she's not so nice? I mean, look, the, no, you, she's the real deal. Two jump jobs here talking about how great she is because she's great. Yeah, and dude, also, how awkward must that be, too? Like, everyone's waiting for Taylor Swift to come down there with Travis Kelsey. Somebody was like, oh, that was an awkward interaction. It would be awkward for anybody, dude. Everyone's probably got their phones up, their cameras, waiting for the ki- a kiss. It's uh-huh. so weird. It's very, no, but, really but that's the price real. of fame sometimes, dude. And get, dude, how about on on Kelsey's side? I had no idea that he was the all time receiving leader in postseason history, passing Jerry Rice. Yes, Jerry freaking Rice, dude. I mean, he's. Catchy, I think. I think he's passed Gronk as the best tight end ever. I, I, you think I, he's wow? I think so, man. I mean, Gronk was great. I, like they're one and one a, but I, I mean. Yeah. His numbers, though. The other thing, too, is, like, he's slowing down. You know, you get older, and you, if you get punched in the legs for the 25 years of your life, you're going to slow down a little bit. 
right. even though he's slower now, it doesn't matter, dude. He's like, you, you remember uh, Tech Mobile? Did you play Tech Mobile? The, oh, yeah, I love Tech Mobile. Dude, the Giants team, they had Mark Bavaro on the original Tech Mobile, and it was like this. Couldn't stop him. It was a slant pass. Yeah. It was the only thing other than Bo Jackson's dominance of that game. The Mark Bavaro slant pass was the second most dominant play in the history of Tech Mobile. There, that, there was no, there was also a James Taylor slant or, or something like Jerry oh, Rice. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Rice at the top. You throw it at the top. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, so it's true. Oh, that game is, dude. I gotta play that. Oh, that's gotta be on my new old school Nintendo. Right. Thing. I definitely. I'll find that today. My momentum is gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but dude, he gets me. He makes every catch, but. The thing is, somebody asked this question, because remember, we were at the 33rd team, the first people to have Travis Kelsey mention the Taylor Swift story, even though he didn't say her name. And we were on, it, it got on entertainment tonight. That's how big this was for this guy's wow. career, right? And right. he's greatest. And we're talking about him as the greatest tight end of all time. And we're saying t- dating Taylor Swift. Is- Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy. Um, But what was my point to this? Oh, somebody brought up the question. At their peak... Who was or is more popular, Taylor Swift or Madonna? Oh wow! It's a good wow. one. Right? Dude, my daughter, I'm, my daughter, my daughter Jillian asked me this the other day because I guess Madonna's doing a couple songs like yeah, she's starting or something. something. So. Yeah, she looks a little wacky these days, but she, she looks, looks like Michael Jackson now. Seriously, dude, I, dude, she went after it with the plastic surgery. I don't what know. is she doing? That's so weird. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> um, uh boy madonna was huge bro but i tell you what when i was at that taylor swift concert you don't realize the swifties out there bro they're everywhere and they're full force swarm support and i just dude i think i think taylor swift might be bigger i think taylor swift might be bigger but i wonder what madonna would have been if social media was around when she was getting after it. So I, right. but, yeah. but I, I'm leaning I, 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 two months, a couple months ago when we had Kelsey on, I said, Madonna, no question. If she had this social media, I give up. I, I, I give up. I'm, I give up. I'm Swifty. I'm, I'm Swifty nation, dude. I'm in, I'm in. Why wouldn't you be? Dude? Like I said, nicest, nicest person out there. Oh, I was watching videos that any little kid that walks up to her to ask for a picture, she takes a picture with every, with every single, everybody, everybody. I know. That's she's, why she's so endearing, dude. She's so nice. So nice. All right. Uh, Moving right along. Speaking of nice, you know, add one more box to Shohei Otani's dominance of the United States. He's the way the Beatles came over and took over America. Shohei Otani is at that level. Baseball Writers Association, uh, their their big event where they uh, hand out the awards that they gave to all the players. Shohei shows up with his dog, who's adorable. I don't know if you've seen that. So yeah. the dog, dude, he did his entire speech, a very like a fairly lengthy, very professional speech in English. And I I can't explain enough. Like you've played with guys, you know, from the Dominican and from Japan and whatever, and I've I've worked with them and spoken to them about how difficult that transition is. Do you go to you're not only you're playing a sport, you're playing it in another country. Add to the fact that Shohei came here with all this hype and the, the dude is everything. The, the, he's like the Taylor Swift of baseball. Like he can do no wrong in my mind. And I'm so impressed and appreciative of how hard it must have been for him to do that speech. Even though I'm sure he probably practiced the language and everything, but English language is stupid. It's not even close. Yeah. People have to learn it. It's one of the hardest languages to learn. And he's he speaks more eloquently than 90% of my Italian family. Uh, from, from, <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, he did an incredible job. And and to come over to this country and learn English, you're right. I think that was one of one of the things that he, you know, challenges challenged himself along with just being one of the best pitchers and hitters in the league. So he just challenged himself to learn English in his spare time, Chinch. Right. And in his spare time learning, he's not you know what I mean? practicing pitching or hitting <laughs> or hitting <laughs> practicing two jobs. Incredible. Yeah. It, it but really to is. get up there and give the speech in English, I thought was awesome. Dude, it reminds me of Pedro Martinez. Pedro yeah. Martinez did his Hall of Fame speech in his second language. So obviously did a lot of it in English and he did a lot of it in Spanish. Right. Dude, I'll I tell you, I'll tell you what, going to the Mets manager, Carlos Mendoza. Yeah. Like the way Mendy 
spoke to like the young Latino players and and some, and then they could speak great English. Like, dude, that's that's awesome. So for Otani awesome. to be over here and be able to do that, dude, that it's just uh, yeah, right. It's it, you felt re- very respected if you're right. in the United States listening to Otani, yeah. you know, get the MVP award and, and he did it in English. Thought it was great. It was great. And, you know, you don't have to do that because it is easy to just have your have a translator. I mean, every the biggest, the the, uh, the worst kept secret in the major leagues for years was that Ichiro could speak really good English, <laughs> but he never really did because he right. had an interpreter. And it, it really, it's really not like worth it or it's, it's so much easier on you to have the interpreter there. And I just think it, it's just such a classy act that not... And by the way, if the interpreter's there, it's totally understandable. Like, I wouldn't want to go to to, I wouldn't want to go to South America, get on Spanish TV, and somebody asked me a question in Spanish, and me having to go back into my record books of my Spanish, my knowledge of Spanish. You 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 can say one word wrong, and it changes your entire sentence, and it can make you look like a jerk. So it is a very. Right. I, I'm just so impressed by it because I think it's as impressive as him being a pitcher and a hitter at the same time because it was just. I mean, it's just he's an impressive human being. It's just an impressive guy. Yeah, and the, yeah, and I think the other point is that where does he find the time? He, he has, he's, you know, exactly. To do what he does, it's so hard to pitch and hit the biggest. There's so much time involved yeah. in that that it, you know, it's it's incredible that he even has the time to yeah. uh, you know do that. Yeah, I, I actually have a quick story. It's pretty cool. So Carlos Pena was looking to get uh, a, another degree because he's a brilliant guy, and uh, he was thinking of going to Columbia. So and his daughter was looking at college at the same time. So me and Carlos, his, his uh, great wife, Pam, and his uh, his awesome daughter, we went up, and I, I met with the AD at uh, Columbia, and they were going to take us on a tour so they can look at the campus. And at the same time, he had, the, the AD asked me, and it was great, there's this guy, uh, greatest name in basketball right now, Geronimo Ruby De La Rosa, okay? He's from the right. DR. I think he's going into his junior, he's a junior now. He's leading, leading Columbia of basketball and scoring came here not speaking a word of English. So he and Carlos met. It was such a it was such a cool experience because like Carlos, again, the baseball players that come out of the DR are, are, are almost like gods. So this kid was right. like, holy cow, I'm sitting with Carlos Payne and obviously Carlos is like the most gracious, sweetest guy in the world. And he's right. like, and they're having this conversation. And I was actually kind of proud of myself because I could understand and I remembered a little bit of my Spanish. And he was talking about, dude, he came from the DR goes to not only comes to America to go to college, but also to be a division one legit, like he's legit. He could get drafted college athlete, but then have to learn school in a different language. He did not speak a word of English before he got on the Columbia university campus. And he was talking about, he's like, I just have to work twice as hard. I have to study twice as hard. And while I'm studying, I'm learning the language at the same time. I, I'm like, Holy cow what the the, the the integrity and the grit that you have to have to do something like that it's just it's just really amazing my dad did it you know yeah. my dad he did couldn't afford medical school in america he comes from middle village queens uh and even though he was the first generation like his parents were both italian and the whole family spoke italian and they never taught their kids italian so my dad moved to uh bologna italy went to the university of bologna his first day there was the first day he started learning italian and he took medical school in italian <laughs> wow Dude, it's crazy yeah that's incredible dr yeah. chance way to go that's incredible that's unbelievable yeah, yeah. when uh, when uh Uncle Ch- when shinchi walked home with the c grade it didn't go <laughs> anyway gets one of those yeah Dude, so, i yeah. tell you what you know what takes me off as we have this having this conversation i took seven years of german what seven years of german dude like eighth grade through college and nobody's I, I only thing I remember is a sixth grade <laughs> skit I did when you were deciding whether you're gonna do German or not. And it goes like this It heist the Carl, V heist two, it heist the Monica, the gates Monica, Donka Goot, on dear, mirror gates out, the Donka, a fear saying Carl, a fear saying Monica, Biz Morgan. That's the only German I remember. Seven years, two years in college. All I remember is a sixth grade freaking. <laughs> Uh, I had to memorize in six. That was really this, good. Uh, Do you even know what you just shit. said? Do you know what you said? Yeah, uh, yeah. I am Carl. What's your name? I am Monica. <laughs> Hi, Monica. No, good morning, Monica. <laughs> Donka Goot. I am good. Thank you very much. And you? 
I'm doing good too. Oh okay, I'll see you later, Monica. All right, see you later, Carl. Good, good day. <laughs> I have one more last point on this. I always said this to every one of my teachers. In any language, you when you're like taking, you know, Spanish one or German one or whatever. Yeah. The first thing it's it's really just more words and putting little sentences together, right? I I, I, I asked this to every Spanish teacher I've ever had. You open a book, okay, and they have pictures of people like you know like uh, the word studying or something, and you'll see somebody in in with a book what? like this, right? In in Spanish, it's it's guapa, which means pretty or beautiful. And I got a picture of this girl, and she's like sitting there with her hair down, like on a beach, whatever. And they got the word fea, ugly. And there's a picture of a girl in a book. And I used to say to my teachers, I'm like, did the person who got this picture taken of them have any idea that they were going to go into every United States Spanish one book as ugly? Like, how could you do that? I, I, I can't. I, you know what? I want to see a Spanish book from this generation now that we've we've kind of a, we've kind of all like evolved a little bit. Yeah, you could do that back then. Now you get now you get fired, canceled. You get canceled. You canceled. Put, do that in a book. Well, that one, I mean, I don't like all the cancellations, but that's a good cancellation. You should cancel somebody for saying, hey, can I take your picture? And I go, yeah. And you take your picture. <laughs> and like Rich Chanchimino is ugly American in in a in a spa, in a English to Spanish book. I don't, I, I, I never got over that. And I would ask every year and I'd always get a laugh in my classes, you know, especially when there were girls around. I was trying to make it. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Anyway. I think that's about all we got for today. I think I can end that. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. We got no baseball news. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, we you know, find we'll find some, some baseball news for tomorrow. Blake Snell. Oh, Blake dude, no, Snell really quick. A zillions of dollars. No, did you see that Colt Keith? Is that his name Colt Keith? Dude, I did see this. What do you think about that? Signed no, for like 29 story. mil or something like that. Yeah. Asked him to play. Dude, what do I think? I looked at his swing. I looked at his numbers from the last year. And I think the Tigers... Got a bargain, uh, you know? Yeah, they made an unbelievable sign, dude. This kid's gonna be gonna be legit, and that's how you do it. You want yes. to save money, offer these guys, take a shot on these guys in the minor leagues with some decent money. Yeah. It's gonna save you money in the long haul. And yeah. if you want to build a big team, that's how you do it. Like the Cleveland yeah. Indians, big, like the Braves are doing now, like the Indians did in the nineties. Yeah. Listen, I I think it's a great move on both parts. I don't. I think there have been some times there have been an occasion where those deals have been done where I think the team may or may not have been taking advantage of the player, but you can't tell me like if I've never taken a swing in a big league game. And by the way, I can walk outside right now and uh, break my ankle or, or, or tear a ligament or something in my arm right. and not have any job security. If I'm an athlete, I, I think it's a really cool thing to say, Hey, we're going to give you a pretty good amount of money right now. You're you're this right. age. You are set. You're good. Now, you know, in five years, maybe it's going to look like we ripped you off, but I don't think it's a ripoff type of deal to do these deals, right? No. Dude, it's Evan, if Evan Lagoria, dad, dude. If your dad, it's Evan Lagoria. If your dad was like, uh, if you're like, dad, this, this team offered me, you know, uh, even if it was like $850,000 a year for the next four years in a minors, what would your dad have said to you on that day, you would have been like, "Well, maybe like you need to get a hold of yourself." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like it. But dude, it, it, go back to it's, it's Evan Longoria in two thousand and eight. Right. Remember they, they signed him to like a six year deal, and everyone's like, yeah. "Don't do it, don't do it." Well, he ended up making two hundred million in his career, but it worked out for both sides. Probably more for the Rays at that point, but yeah. hey, it's millions of dollars as a minor leaguer, you'll take it. Yeah, millions of dollars as a human being, you'll take it. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's great. Exactly. That's great. Anyway, yeah. Props to him. Props to that that contract. Good, good move by both parties. Yeah. yeah. All right, dude. What do you got going on this uh, this week? Uh, nothing much, dude. Just flying in space right flying now. Having space. a great time. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Watch out behind you. It looks like there's like a an explosion going on behind. I think there yeah. is, dude. Yeah. I think there is. Is that like a war? Is that space? Hey. For, like showing a war. I don't know. There might be, dude. Just don't forget that we're on the, we're on the Earth right now, spinning at sixty thousand miles an hour in in <laughs> space. So just get a hold of that progress, dude. We're moving, we're moving forward. We're always moving perspectives. Forward. I'll never forget. Yeah. You showed me the video of Jake giving your uh, speech at your wedding, going, 
I'm just trying to make some eggs in the morning. My dad's like, that breath you just took, you're a one in seven. <laughs> it's the greatest. I tell my kids all the time, listen, the chances of you being here as a human are one in 420 trillion. Uh, Appreciate it. You're going to take 100,000 heartbeats today. Are you thanking anybody? You're going to take 25,000 breaths today. You're going to think about it. Is there any, what, how about the gift of life? It's called the gift of life, kids. Nah, let's end on that note. True. That's nice. true. All right, dude. We'll catch up tomorrow. Right. Okay. All right, bro. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Hey, everybody out there, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Subscribe and download, please. May the force be with you, too, kids. May the force be with you, bro. Love you.